Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about to know the video? There's another paid request this time for Peter. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics, reactions, reviews, re reviews, randomness, out of blueness, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is a commentary for a film called Left Behind from 2000. I don't know if Peter saw this film and liked it, or saw this film and hated it, I don't know, he didn't give details, I've never seen this film, I know what it is though, so I'm sure there's going to be a real uh, pain in the butt of a movie, because it stars Turk Cameron, and if it stars Turk Cameron, you know you're in trouble, but, and for those interested, if you want to request, you have pretty much any type of but commentary or reaction review topic ranking list <clears throat> whatever it may be feel free to send it either directly to my paypal or join my patreon both links are down below in the info box so left behind the 2000 version because there's a later one with nicholas cage but this is the 2000 one with kirk saving christmas cameron so i have a pause at the beginning three two one pressing play Your career? <laughs> he was saying, how do you describe a beginning of an end, beginning and an end? And I'm like, your career. Jerusalem, 6 p.m. I don't know why we need to know it's 6 p.m., but okay. I remember these books... I think my mom read a lot of these books back in the day, these Christian books about the apocalypse. That's weird. Like the names, they have the first name in small, but the last name in big letters. Why do they do that? That's weird. Like the first name is all in small letters, but the last name is all in capital. That just seems like random and weird. And these are like just random shots people had when they were on vacation in Jerusalem. <clears throat> it was a Kirk Cameron, Brad Johnson, Clarence Gilliard. Brad Johnson. I think that's the guy who was in... Flight of the Intruder with Danny Glover and Philadelphia Experiment 2. I know he passed away this year, actually, from... They say from the C to the O to the VID from that. I went, oh, okay, that's an actor I've seen once or twice before, and that's too bad he passed away. He was, like, 62 years old. And Clarence Delia, the uh, junior, he was Chuck Doris's partner in Walter Texas Ranger. So he's, he's in this. And Kirk Cameron, of course, he was on the TV show Growing Pains. And then he became a pain. Being heavy in the Christian to the point of, if you're not a Christian, you're... Alan McElroy did a screenplay with two other people. Alan B. McElroy, he worked on Halloween 4 and Rapid Fire and... Vic Saren directed it. Who the hell is Vic Saren? Iraq, 6.03 p.m. How many planes are there in the sky? Syrian-Israel border, 6.03 p.m. Oh my god. The special effects. What the hell? The helicopters was like a sea of wasp. Mediterranean Sea, 6 or 4 p.m. What the hell? So, Kurt Tamara's a reporter. There's some wheat field in the desert while the world has a food shortage. Mm -hmm. 
This other guy, I swear I've seen... I think I saw him in Tommy Boy or something? Why are there so many airplanes in the sky? Maybe it's the aliens. Okay. So, random airplanes just blowing up everything on the ground. Don't know why. That Turk Tavern was a... Couldn't even play a damn reporter. Man, these are some really cheap effects. Almost asylum. Okay, would there be that many planes in the sky? There's like a thousand planes. Like literally like a thousand. There's less bugs in the sky than planes. Wait, they were like 50 feet away from this... Underground bunker? Here's a wheat field in the middle of nowhere. They just went like 50 feet. Now they're in this bunker that looked like, I don't know, if G.I. Joe had a 90s TV show. This would be, I don't know, Cobra Command or something. Bolster air attack on Israel. Oh my god. So the planes are just exploding, but they haven't fired a shot. Is this how, I mean, is this how a camera works? Even in the year 2000? <laughs> oh my god. And by the way, his name is Buck Williams. Is that how he was in the book? Buck Williams. Why does the thing say screensaver? What if screen Why is it called screensaver? And why does that girl have like a tattoo on her forehead? Again, why does this girl have a tattoo on her forehead? Or is that a star? For those who read the book, you don't have to tell me if this is like how the book is or not. I, yeah, I remember the covers of the book. Some old guy came out. 
Maybe he's trying to redo Cybok from Star Trek V. Something about a covenant in seven years. I didn't understand what the hell he meant. <clears throat> just all the planes exploded just because Chicago. <clears throat> Same lame ass music. I think that's Brad Johnson. I said, sadly, he's passed away. <coughs> yeah, I'd seen him once or twice back in the day in a few films. But, yeah, it's too bad he passed away, especially from sickness. Such a weird name to have for a character, Buck Williams. I think Nicholas Cage might have played this character, the Brad Johnson here, because I remember Nicholas Cage, that new one, and then there was a airplane I don't yeah. obviously I don't remember much of it this kid you don't shape up will pick you up into the herd locker. Of course we gotta have our characters have a fight to give some drama and tension. Drama! They're fighting! Unless Claire's Dillard, Walter Texas Ranger, he plays a reverend. And if you haven't known, this is a very religious movie because the books were very very religious which is funny those are books that no one ever mentions again and at the time they were like a big deal and they had quite a series like five or six books but I think they did like one or two movies and I think the people were like man these movies are so terrible don't keep going I mean, I'm sure an actor does this role. Well, Kirk Cameron does it because he's a nut. And no, just because you're religious doesn't mean you're a nut. <clears throat> I'm saying because Kirk Cameron is a nut. Not because he's religious, but because he's a nut. You know, <clears throat> damn sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my throat. It's like this damn movie is taking my th saliva away from my damn lungs. It was Jesus just sucking it out. Sucking the sin out of me. As we have like some random religious song put in there. GNN Studios. Why is that one part green but everything else is white on the buildings? 
That's a weird structural aesthetic. So again, Brad Johns is a pilot having some family troubles. Buck Williams is a reporter going to try to find out why these planes just blew up in the sky out of the blue. <coughs> I forget the names of all the damn... There's Left Behind, I think there's Tribulation Force. Let's see if I can find what the other films were called. So I'm listening to the dialogue. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you say so. Yeah, get some sleep for about ten hours. Just go to bed, dude. Just go to bed. G N N. God's news network? So in the book, he's called Cameron Buck Williams. His nickname was Buck, but he's called Cameron.
Yeah, I just have a bad feeling. There's going to be a lot of religious mumbo-jumbo that I'm not going to give a crap about. So the books are Left Behind, Tribulation Force, Nikolai, Soul Harvest, Ap Apollyon, Assassins, The Indwelling, The Mark, Desecration, The Remnant, Armageddon, Glorious Appearing. So they had 12 books. And yeah, these books were pretty successful. They were on the New York Times bestseller list. Sorry. So Left Behind the Movie came out 2000, the sequel came out 2002, and then I guess, nah, forget it. Oh, there was something called Left Behind World at War in 2005, which is funny. None of the books were called World at War. And then there's a reboot in 2014 just called Left Behind. Left Behind World of War, the third one was directed by Tradar Baxley. And Louis Gossett Jr. I'm sorry I don't have much to say. I'm just trying to understand the dialogue and what's going on here. They just pray. Vice Third World Hunter, Catherine. So yeah, if you say so. Yes, one thing I remember from this hear about the story is that during this plane there's people that disappear. And then Nikolai, he, I think he becomes the main bad guy in that character we're looking at. He becomes the main bad guy of the series. He's the Antichrist.
Wait, are they supposed to be flying? They're supposed to be flying, but nothing is moving. Like, nothing's outside. There's nothing outside the windows. Or ha are they landed? Or have they... Wait, there's nothing outside the windows. Are they even moving? Are they flying? Are they in a black void? I don't think the windows would be completely black. How the hell you would even see? You should stay because I told you to. I'm trying to look up info, forget it. Not much info to talk about either. You want me to check on your husband to see if he's in the bathroom? Okay, lady. <coughs> yeah, that's a bit weirder that all of his clothes are still there. <laughs> yeah, that would make things a bit weirder. Ah, uh, this is where the people are disappearing. Nope, nobody in there. So people are disappearing. There's people that disappeared and their clothes are left behind. I think it's like the, the faithful and the complete innocent. They're the ones that are taken while you guys are left behind. I will let the fight for your right to party. Oh yeah, they've gone far. Trust me, they've gone far. <laughs> Idiot. You need to smack that guy in the face and knock him out. I think the new film, well, I say new, is in like 2014. Doesn't like the entire film go in, uh, is on a plane?
Uh, so the driver just disappeared, so the car just went. That seems kind of shitty for God to do. Be like, you know what, zoink. And hey, if someone gets hurt and someone gets killed, oh well. And yeah, let's make this mom suffer because we just took her baby. So make that mom suffer and be sad. Yeah, that's really nice of God to do. I don't know, I just don't think God is that much of an asshole. Maybe I have a different thought on God. Or at least he'll tell people, here's a message, this is why I did it, you have a chance to be, try to be a better person, generally, but, you know, whatever. That's, religious is like a whole other thing to talk about, where it could be a very picking point at people when you bring it up in any connotation. It did get people upset, it did get people mad, it get people angry, it get people offended, it get people having fights, arguments. Trust me again. As for religion, I want to believe. I'm open minded. And there you go. <clears throat> So that means there could be some pilots that disappear and the whole damn plane crashed. That doesn't really seem like the sign of God to do something like that. Hey, the plane crashed, oh well. They just said in. I can get the concept, but it's just... I don't know. So many things that just make God look like an asshole. That's really my thought process on it. It's like God is vengeful and he's a dick and he's an asshole and it's like really? That the whole point of God was that he's cool. Nice, easy going. Apparently not. You know what's sad? Based on the clips I saw in the Nicolas Cage film, this looks bigger budget than that film. I think the entire idea, yeah, I could be wrong, wasn't a good chunk of the, that film on a plane, but this one, not so much. Well, because if it's on a plane, it's a lot cheaper, because it's just in one set. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, Kirk Cameron did this film, number one, because, again, he's heavily religious to the point of trying to force other people into believe in what he believes. Lady, find a vibrator, you're so damn alone. Ain't his fucking job. You look like someone from the Brady Bunch. 
and the one where it curls. So I guess they just wanted to call him Butt because again in the book his first name is Cameron. Yeah, why didn't he take the dog? Like, why didn't they take all the animals, the pets? The pets didn't do anything wrong. Or are pets not allowed in heaven? <laughs> That's a question for the movie. Are pets not allowed? Like, Claire's Gilliard is a reverend. Why wouldn't they take the reverend? Why, did they take his wife and son? Did his wife and son disappear? Maybe. <sighs> Maybe his wife and son disappeared. But, I mean, the idea is an interesting idea. Like, people disappear, and you give this... You know, what explanation can you give either religion or supernatural like alien religion is a way where it's her clothes right yeah no it's teddy bears so maybe the kid was in pajamas so the sun disappeared Missed his last birthday party. You're the party pooper. See, you t this whole thing about he was too busy with his work and job and what was going on, but now his wife and kid are gone, disappeared, and all the time you could have spent with them, you didn't, so you lost that chance, lost that opportunity, and you have a cross to remind people the audience why they were taken so the cross she was obviously very religious but will that mean a lot of the religious people when they leave I didn't like the the reverend Clarence Dilliard maybe some type of story where he's not an actual believer or something he lost his faith so he lost his ass A bad crying scene. I've seen much worse. I mean, for a movie, it's hard to how you try without making it look laughable because in real life we wouldn't laugh, but in <laughs> and the movie's more e easier to do that.
So we got Brad Johnson through the Bible now he's looking at it. Go say the rest of the movies don't be him just reading the Bible <laughs> word for word. Okay. Seems a bit excessive. Hey, I want to ask you a question. Do back inside, we'll shoot you in the face. Get excessive much? Well, that's interesting. The dog was being taken a walk and his owner disappeared. <laughs> and yeah, I guess apparently pets are not allowed. Well, that sucks. Sorry, pets ain't allowed. Well, that's fu I mean, in one Jeep, they're ready to shoot you in the face, but the other, hey, I'll take you home and drop you off. So, I guess depending on who drives the Jeep, want to be... Ready to shoot you in the face? I want to be nice and kind. <laughs> so what, did Kirk Cameron not wait outside still? Or did he go inside? Be hell of a story to tell your daughter. How does that mean? Where the hell did Kurt Cameron go? Maybe sleep on the couch, I don't know. Like, Who the hell are you? Her camera is just not the best actor in the world. And that's the thing with with, uh, with Kirk is that... Okay, he wants to believe in, in religion. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm open to believe in religion as well. 
but we get to the point that you're just again ostracizing people because they don't or you're really trying to push your ideals under other people's values or you really like we need to do this we do do that I think he started doing that on the show growing pains and and other stuff it's just like dude you just become more obnoxious than anything more forceful than anything and then you come off as a dick Really, you're not even going to tell your dad that you're leaving? You're just going to drive... I thought you were told to stay inside because of martial law. And that, that dog's still sitting there. How the hell do you have that much money on you? <laughs> nice hair. That's not what you want to say, Kurt. You know you want to say, I hope you find Jesus. I mean, I'm sorry to Peter. It's not much of a commentary. A lot of it's just kind of me just listen to the dialogue. This is a dialogue-heavy movie. Uh, I mean, I, I guess in a way, I, it's, I don't like it, but it's not as much as a train wreck as I thought it would be, I guess. It's, you know, other than the really laughable effects at the beginning, but the idea is, you can understand the kernel idea being popular, even based on the little bits in this movie, the idea of, again, a bunch of people just disappear and take in, and the people left behind have to deal with the confusion trying to understand what's going on, trying to get a handle on it. There's possible intrigue in that story. I'm still wondering how this guy had that much money on him because the guy said pay with cash. He had that much money in cash on him. So let's look a little bit into Kirk Cameron so that I'm not just staring here. Yeah. Begin acting at age 9. Starring role. First one is age 13 and two marriages, a TV show. They tell you five cast in Growing Pains. He was making $50,000 a week. He was in a 60-second Pepsi commercial during the Super Bowl. Candace Cameron of Full House is his sister. He was in the 1987 film Like Father, Like Son. He was in a film called Listen to Me. Growing Pains went from 1985 to 1992. He was in the WB, the WB sitcom Kirk, 1995, and ended two years later. There were TV reunion films, The Growing Pains Moving 2000, Growing Pains Return of the Seavers in 2004. 
George and Trishan theme productions, Left Behind trilogy, 2008 film Fireproof. Of course, it's Saving Christmas. Oh yeah, in 2012, Kirk Cameron said that homosexuality is unnatural, is detrimental and ultimately destructive to so many of the foundations of civilization. Yes, he did say that. Let me repeat, Kirk Cameron said on CNN, Homosexuality is unnatural, is detrimental, and ultimately destructive to so many foundations of civilization. A lot of people were mad at him. Glad was mad at him. Roseanne Barr, Craig Ferguson, and even co-stars Tracy Gold and Alan Thicke. I guess he was an atheist, and then 17, he was a born-again Christian. He began to insist that storylines be edited to remove anything he thought too adult or inappropriate in growing, growing pains. I definitely kind of made an about face going toward another aspect of my life. I shifted my focus from 100% on the show to 100% on my new life, Christianity, and zero, left 0% zero on the show. And even the friendships that were a part of that show. If I could go back, they have to make... What the hell? So Kirk Cameron's being shot at. And... Not really the most convincing of... Sniper wannabe takedowns. Sometimes Delia just called himself a fraud. And I mean, he's a... I remember him... I didn't see a lot of Walker Texas Ranger, but I've seen bits and pieces. I remember him being good on it. Jonas Delier is good in that brief scene. Why wasn't he the lead? Okay, well, I said too soon. With him going, ah, dad! <laughs> that was a bit laughable.
<laughs> it's like, I didn't want you. I was hoping I'd turn around and be Jesus or God, but you? Flight of the Intruder? But I mean, it's a bit sad, weird looking at this as Brad has passed away. And because of the, the virus. At least that's what it said. Um, it's, it's too bad. That's a pastor that knew what was going to happen and just, they had these tapes in what, some kind of vault just in case. Tip a doctor, but you can't come in. That's the girl with the, what, tattoo on his forehead or whatever? Yeah, was the guy who was killed Dirk Tactical Campaign Simulation. Dan Seven. Temple Stretcher Simulation. United Nations, New York. <laughs> so pretty much you have one guy rising to power to pretty much have world domination in his grasp. I don't convert people to his own thought processes or his own religion or Control the hearts, control the minds, control the food, you control the world. So they're going to rebuild that place. That's probably going to be the headquarters of the bad guy or something. <laughs> it's true. Follow the money. Yeah, follow the money. Yeah, I apologize to Peter. Just not much to talk about with this movie. I mean, is that garbage enough to make fun of the entire way through? And it's not good for me to recommend it. And this is probably better with the... She's better to the new one.
Yes, pretend to be interested, at least for me. Pretend to give a shit, lady. Pretend to give a fuck. Yeah, he caused by radiation, by weapons testing. Yeah, radiation for weapons testing made people disappear from their clothes and skip people willy nilly. <laughs> that girl literally said, Wow, someone is making sense. What the hell are you talking about? God makes more sense than that. That's a good man. Well, that's what he wants you to believe. He'll be president of the world. <clears throat> Was that the assassin? There's like a music motif and Kirk Cameron did this, but then he didn't say anything. That's the guy who shot at me, or that's the guy that did it. Good luck. Oh, great. Now the dog's going to find out. And that's going to go even more up shit creek. It's going to be a lot of fun to explain that. I was cheating on your mother. So suck it up, buttercup. Yeah, don't cheat on your fucking mother, man. Don't cheat on people. Dump them, if that's the case. If you're that far gone that you don't think about cheating, just end it. Don't be a damn coward about it. Don't be Amber Heard, either. Amber Turd. God, that Amber Turd. That whole Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial thing has been ridiculous. Some bitch. I tell you one thing on a side note, if Amber Heard still somehow wins this case, it shows there ain't jet squat to anything in this world called justice. So she probably will win or it'll be like a draw. Kinda loud. More of this family drama. I mean, I guess despite what's going on, because of the events of the film going on, I was going to say, man, it's crazy he watches one VHS tape and he's like become completely converted, but again, with the weird circumstances, that seems a bit easier to swallow because, you know, everyone's like disappear and the damn clothes are left behind like that.
yeah, and kind of shitty that the pets don't have a chance and don't have a. Just here's what do other people say about that? this film? Just kind of it's boring. That's really what it is. By by general gist of it is a possible interesting concept, but it just comes off as rather boring, just rather meh to me. I mean, nothing really, not any strong. feelings one way or another just like I said just it's just so boring and just so meh that I just do not care one way or another Sorry, I know this is probably the most boring commentary I've done because I don't know what to say about it. I don't even, I, I don't even know why Peter wanted me to do a commentary. I just maybe he thought it'd be a funnier commentary. I don't, I don't know. I mean, so Surviving Christmas is worse and funnier. This is just, I said, very dialogue heavy. I think I'm just not good at commentaries. It's just what it is. Let me look up some other info. 16% on Ron Tomatoes. Like, so 45 reviews. Yeah, I don't really blame them. Isn't always about money. Control the world's food supply. You do what we say or you starve. Let's see. The total absence of anything that actually looks like a narrative is one of Left Behind's issues, but it's not honestly one of the biggest. It's of apocalyptic book series in the Bible. These folks did eternity in heaven while I'm stuck here watching the Left Behind trilogy. I'm calling my rabbi. <laughs> Lame dialogue and acting is rescued by interesting plot and characters. Eh. The storytelling is heavy handed, the plot convoluted, the direction inconsistent, the acting wooden, and the effects cheesy. Well, I agree with the effects. 
Heavy handed? Yeah, I can see that. I mean, the plot convoluted? I don't know if it's convoluted. I mean... Damn, a car bomb. What's that random shot? Some woman. Like, some random woman is just looking on. Like, cause it's just some random... Who's the random woman? Woman did like this. Like, who the hell was that? Who the hell was that? The loosely scripted story is further burdened with clunky dialogue performances, shy continuity, and Kirk Cameron. <laughs> the only thing left behind made me want to do was pray they would soon be over. <laughs> Neither as bad as you might fear, nor as good as you might hope. Steve Rose Internet Reviews... Yeah... That's the review I drew with the most. Neither as bad as you might fear, nor as good as you might hope. Exactly. That's kind of why it's hard to... Uh, Ezekiel 38. So God blew up all the planes. Dan 7. the UN That's what the old guy said, seven years. See, this scene here creates an intriguing part of the plot by realizing that like, each of these little things on the bottom right corner were Bible passages and how 
each of these things are foretold in the Bible. Again, that kernel intrigue of an idea is probably what propelled this book series into being so successful. Look at some actual reviews. <clears throat> Heartthrob Kirk Cameron and his actress wife Chelsea. That's his wife, Chelsea uh, Noble. That's his wife. The bare bones movie centers around the mysterious sudden disappearance of millions of the world's people. They're there one man, then poof, all that remains are the shapeless piles of shorn clothing. If it were the outer limits, we'd have a crackling global case of simultaneous, spontaneous combustion. This being left behind, we're presumed to have as evidence of the apocalypse. Let's see. Tale of the Antichrist, World Domination, United Nations Stooges, and the Global Food Supply. There's also something about an unfaithful airline pilot, a stewardess who's leaving that did for a more rewarding career at the UN, and a disaffected teen whose nose ring disappears after the apocalypse. I, I didn't notice that. Twenty dialogue performances, shoddy continuity, and well Kirk Cameron, although his character's climactic acceptance of Jesus as his personal savior while in a public men's restroom is a one-of-a-kind moment. Oh, great. Look forward to that. And Left Behind were a sci-fi corker. I'm not sure I'd accept whatever explanations it offered about its mysterious disappearance. But as an evangel evangelist thriller, probably that bit is better left behind. This is a movie whose basic competence can be illustrated by pointing out that there are scenes cross cutting between events happening simultaneously at three visual distinct times a day, which implies in its very opening shot that the sun sets in the east over Jerusalem, which would be a miracle, sure, but not one that the plot has in mind. How badly it fumbles every single character arc, which is the literal worst thing that could happen, given that the only thing that this narrative has to be structure itself is the religious conversion of its three main characters, one of which appears to take place completely off screen and is stupid because the villain is a charismatic Romanian politician who talks like Count Chocula as we give the singular name of Nikolai. Let's see. Kurt Cameron's present means that his wife Chelsea is also present. That's a shame because whatever nobles up and left behind, which for convenience sake we shall call acting, is the most magnificently unbelievable BS I've seen in a really long time. I mean, I don't know. I've seen much worse. Maybe that's the thing. I've seen Alien Beasts. I've seen... Yeah, I've seen a lot of worse stuff.
Let's see, as a film, it's terrible. A Christian fundamentalist, fundamentalist film styled as a gray B sci-fi action thriller. The picture's B-movie values probably, probably play better on video than in theaters. A poorly made motion picture. This die five minute movie rushes over everything so quickly that the plot holes look an awful lot bigger. A competently made film hampered by wooden performances and a script that has a few too many gee whiz moments of dialogue. The film isn't remotely frightening and the high school level acting doesn't help. Yep, that's Kirk Cameron realizing in the bathroom. Just out of the blue, it's true. A classic case of preaching to the converted, this relentlessly boring movie is unlikely to appeal to anyone except hardcore fans of Christian sci-fi. He's that called Neil on the... Yeah. Oh, God. The church camera is sitting in the bathroom talking to God. Which is probably what he normally does. <laughs> so this is probably... His own personal experience. Sitting in public bathrooms, talking to God. Left Behind will leave many Christians scratching their heads in bewilderment and sure they grow curious enough or bored enough to watch it. Unintentionally laughable dialogue, hackneyed writing, and uninspired direction. I guess I'm not noticing the, the dialogue, it's just, I've been so consumed with a lot of bad movies, the bad dialogue just passing through my brain waves. I'm not accepting it as fully as I should. I have some Christian boy bands on. The movie's relatively modest budget reportedly cost seventeen million. Oh, much of that spent on the promotion. Just put that on the film. A fleet of warplanes streaked across the sky at the beginning of the movie look like what they are. Cut rate computer generated effects. Yeah, that cost like dollar twenty five. Various scenes of mass hysteria rarely involve more than a few dozen hired extras. At one point when Buck leaves Steele's house to find that private pilot. No, I can't let you go outside, it's madness out there. Uh no, just a few extras. It will appeal to the already converted, and they conclude the movie with an obvious opportunity to make sequels. But the filmmakers have a long way to go when it comes to the fine art of drama.
took you this long to realize he's probably the bad guy? I could have told you that. I figured that out long ago. Teens and Queens. Sounds like that song from Jared Leto. What the hell was it? Teens and Queens. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Slightly like religious bumbo jumbo mixed in with trying to be political conspiracy theory not espionage but the rapture mixed in with dead conspiracy theory mixed in with boredom. Damn when you make the rapture boring it shows you screwed up. Who is the puppeteer? I'm dealing with a sack of sheet. <laughs> I work up all of you to join this great team. He's definitely hamming it up. <laughs> we made you little like you're our creation. What the hell? Why are you giving the guy your gun? You idiot? <clears throat> that guy was like, hey, how are you doing? With big smiles and like, yes, give me your gun. What an idiot. That guy should be fired. Yes, no one's gonna no one's gonna try to do anything to stop this. Yeah, you got a gun in my back. What the hell am I supposed to say? Just shoot him. Be done with it. There you go. But it's okay, if it's one guy, like, why are we listening to this one guy? Why don't y'all just tackle him and take the gun? So I was just, like, making this shit up. This is the story you will tell. Is this correct?
<sighs> Everyone just saying terribly sad as if they're just part of a damn cult. They just immediately got brainwashed. <laughs> What did they do? Drag them into this place and then. <laughs> so they took two dead bodies, dragged them into this room, or. Or they just turned the lights on so it looks like a different room? <laughs> Now they're believing it as if so Kurt Cameron is the only one that remembers what really happened. Everyone just believed what. Gotcha, okay. They believe in what they want. So... He has the power to brainwash people too, literally. Well, I mean, I guess he's the Antichrist. I guess he would have that power. <laughs> His brainwash followers. In some place said there was eight books, but I think it was like a dozen books. Ah, uh, because he believed, so he was able to see what they didn't see, and not be brainwashed. I didn't know that was Kirk Cameron's wife. So it's Brad and Clarence. But yeah, I'm sure some people did this phone test like, wow, you know, this this is such a big book because it'll be a hit and it'll do like five, seven, eight movies. And that wasn't really the case. There was two more. I think the third movie was still part of the second book. And then uh, that was that. So to Peter, I apologize for the 
lackluster commentary. I apologize for that. I just... The thing with religious movies is that... Unless they're total train wrecks, like... I don't know... What was that one movie? War Room? Or Surviving Christmas? This one... In a way, I mean... You know, people say, oh, it's one of the worst films ever. I can't even say that even close. It's just a very boring mix of, like I said, conspiracy and rapture type stuff. I'm sitting there knowing, I mean, I've seen much worse. I've seen much better. I just didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to comment on. I didn't know what to even fathom with this film. Kind of just sat there and did nothing for me. I mean, it looked like there's always going to be a big cluster with that beginning with these ridiculous effects. And, like, we're in, like, three locations and each one had a damn time stamp. But then it was just kind of people finding religion and... Conspiracy about controlling the food supply and this guy becoming the Antichrist and some of these people becoming religious almost off screen and there you go. So like I said, apparently this guy a sequel and a third world at war and then there was no more. <laughs> they were done with it. So so I just take that for what you will. So with that said Apologize for boring people. Thank you guys. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.